Adam, it's good to see you. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing awesome, Kevin. How are you? Fantastic. I'm doing great as well. It's nice to come off of this cold that I had and feeling a little bit better. Yeah, man. I'm glad you're feeling better. I had something too that kind of knocked me out. But It's I'm weird. Back. Like this flu season, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. But we're back at it. We are back at it. And speaking of getting after it, I know you were at a multifamily conference on one of our most recent guests, Gino with Jake and Gino. You can check that out on tgwipodcast.com forward slash Gino dash Barbaro. Yeah. Yeah. It was an awesome event. I, I really got a ton of value out of it. I loved it. I'm, I came back energized and ready to go. And what was the number one takeaway that you got out of uh, an event like this? Yeah, I think the number one takeaway is the connections I met. Um, you just meet so many valuable, interesting people who you you will likely add value to in some way in the future, people you'll end up running into again and stay in touch with, ex people who will expand your network. So uh, that, that was definitely the best part of it. And of course, I got a lot of good knowledge out of it as well. And uh, overall, it's just a phenomenal event. I think these kind of events are so important to grow yourself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is from my experience, and I'm also assuming this, that the people you, rec you met there were in on the spectrum of experience, meaning there are people who have never done a multifamily deal, and there are people who have hundreds, maybe thousands of units, but they're all there continuing their education. Is that a fair assessment? It's totally accurate. And I met some of each of those and everyone in the middle, which is great because they all add value to you and you can add value to them in different ways. It takes all kinds to, uh, to work in this, you know, in this area to invest in multifamily in particular, it takes a team. Absolutely. And so I think that you, the first thing that you should do as an investor, if you're listening to this is establish your investor identity. And then when you figure out what that is, um, I think we have a great episode that talks about investor identity. We do. <laughs> but once you figure out what that is, it's, it's nice to go to these events because you'll learn so much. Your brain will basically be mush by the time you're done. You'll connect with so many awesome people and you will attend this. Uh, coming out of it, you'll be so invigorated and motivated to go and get after it. Yeah. And this kind of leads into what we wanted to talk about today, Kevin, which is the importance of investing. Why it's so important. I think that from my personal experience and what I've learned that investing is the single greatest action you can take to achieve financial freedom, but also build wealth. Yeah, that's what it means for me as well. And I know there are a lot of different goals for investing. Uh, people have different reasons why they invest. But I think most people at the end of the day, it is primarily wealth generation, wealth creation. And um, there's no better way, in my opinion, to do that than investing in real estate. I agree. And I know you were, were talking about this earlier before we hit the record button, was that the idea of trading time for money and how investing kind of does the opposite, where if you put your money to work, that money never sleeps. It's going to continue working so that you can sleep, so that you can do other things. Yeah, I've read a lot of books on wealth that say broke people or the poor and middle class think about trading their time for money. They think in terms of how much I make. As, and yeah, yeah. wealthy people don't think that way. They, yep. they don't think that way. They think about uh, a return on their investment. And they think about how they can, it's almost like maximizing the results of their money with the minimum amount of effort. That's Very at least good. that's what I want to do with in what I invest. Yeah, me too. Yeah, well said. I think that is how they think about it. And, um, and that's how I'm starting to think about it. I'm looking for ways I can make my money work hard for me and put as little of my time into it as possible while maximizing the, um, the return my money makes for itself. I agree. And when we talk about this is what we've gathered and what we've learned. What are some resources that open your eyes to this idea of investing? Oh yeah, that's, that's a great uh, question. I've got quite a few. Um, Tony Robbins, Money Master the Game. That's a good that book. book just opened my eyes. 
Um, of course, Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cashflow Quadrant, they all kicked it off and helped me start to discover a more, um, a little further along in my journey, I got a hold of Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins and read that. And that started to really open my eyes to the whole uh, 401k and, and mutual fund world and how it's not what I thought it was. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that same for me, that was an eye opening experience because there are systems or like the way the system is set up from my understanding and from what I've read, it's basically set up so that they're going to get paid regardless of if they make you money or not. Yeah. That's my understanding as well. If it's for the ultra wealthy, the top 1% to continue to make uber millions and unfortunately it's at the expense of people's ignorance and i i was ignorant as well i i thought that was investing to put my money into a 401k uh, or into an ira and i admittedly didn't know much about what was going on behind the scenes. I was sold on this idea of compound interest working in the fund over years and I'll have enough to retire. But um, reading those books and, uh, and some others really opened my eyes to the fact that that is much, much riskier than educating yourself on an investment class. For example, multifamily real estate, notes, uh, public companies, private companies, but really educating yourself and investing intelligently based on that. So that is what I think it boils down to. I I can sit here and tell you till I'm blue why you should invest in real estate, but for some people, it's just not going to be what they want to do. And that's, you do what you think is best. And I will kind of, okay, I will, we can agree to disagree for some things, but ultimately if you are going to invest, do it intelligently. Read up on what it is you're going to do. If you're going to pick a target date fund, understand what that target date fund is. Look at the fund managers. And I'm speaking from experience. When I had a 401k, I just picked one and said, okay, yeah, I probably plan to retire around then. I'm going to select that one. That one looks good to me. The return that it says it's getting the last year or two sounds great. And then you set it and forget it. And I think it's unfortunate that myself included, I didn't do any research. I had no idea what they were investing in what the strategy is, none of that I took an initiative on. And it takes a lot of work to be intentional with your investing, but you can introduce some of that control and mitigate your risk by doing something like that. Yeah, and it's so critical. I mean, it's about your future. It, what could be more important than your financial security, especially when you're too old to work or what happens if you lose your job? When you're trading time for money in a job, if something happens outside your control and you're no longer able to keep that job for whatever reason, it happens to you. But if you've got money coming in from investments, then you're safe. Absolutely. Uh, The income, the cash flow, the streams of income generated from your investment is ultimately what you want to get. Instead of, like we said, tearing your time for money, which is how we were all raised to to think about things is that you work that amount of the amount of hours you put in is how you're going to get paid when investing it's really not that at all it's going to pay you regardless assuming you invest wisely yeah and there's another book that i thought was really interesting called 401 chaos by a guy named andy tanner he's in robert kiyosaki's network and um i believe he was on a rich dad podcast but it was a fascinating read in, and it really gets into the detail of a lot of the issues with 401k. So if anyone is interested in diving deeper, I recommend that material. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, the money, the Tony Robbins book, Money, Master the Money Game, I, I can't remember the title of that book. We'll put it in the show notes as well. Yeah. Uh, but it really dives into the 401k as well. And it, it we just ask you look at it from, a different perspective. Be open to recognizing that you may have been fed for all intents and purposes a lie. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really kind of scary. Uh, so the thing to do rather than be paralyzed by fear once you learn this is to equip yourself to invest intelligently. 
educate yourself. And that's why we're doing this podcast. We're educating ourselves as we go and trying to bring those who listen along with us and educate them too. And the most successful investors that I have spoken to for whatever asset class they have, they can break down the reasoning at which and the reasons why, excuse me, they're investing in that asset class. If I said, hey, I'm curious, why do you choose that? They'll go bam, 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 bam. They'll be able to talk to me and educate me on it. And I, ultimately, that's what I would want for whoever's listening to this. If you decide, hey, I'm going to invest in index funds. Okay, why? I, edu- be able to educate me so that you, you yourself are informed. Because if you can educate somebody else and they can understand what you're trying to convey, that means you yourself understand what it is you're actually trying to do. Yeah, I think the the one thing I want to communicate to people who are listening is don't just blindly put your money into a company plan like a 401k or an IRA and uh, hope for the best. Educate yourself, start to look at some things that you think you might be interested in and go all in, educate yourself and take some action to intelligently invest for your financial future. And you don't have to invest in a 401k, or you may not have to. Uh, you can ask your employer that if it's required. In my exp- experience, it's, it hasn't been required. So it's something that you should uh, look into as well. If you can think of other ways that you can invest your money, by all means, you can do that. Just make sure that you're fully aware of all the other options. Yeah, I think that's great. All right. So stay educated. If you want to learn more, if you have any questions about what Adam and I are doing personally, reach out to us, techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. So invest wisely and invest safely. Thanks, everybody.